I'll be showing 12 new features in PowerPoint. This includes PowerPoint desktop, web, Mac, and mobile. The PowerPoint team has been really busy adding AI-infused features and intelligence, and this is not your parents' PowerPoint. So let's get started. The first new feature is presenting directly from PowerPoint into Teams. This is one of my favorites that's come out recently because a lot of people are using Teams meetings right now. I have a PowerPoint deck open, and in the upper right, you're gonna see a present in Teams button that's recently appeared. This is rolling out in Office Insiders right now, and it'll be rolling out into the Office 365 connected version of PowerPoint Desktop in the coming weeks. It's also on the Slideshow tab. There's a button right here, Present in Teams. So it's in two places. Now, before I click that button, let's make sure that you've already started the Teams meeting. So here's Teams meeting. I'm in this and there's a couple other people and I'm gonna upload my deck directly into here with one click. You need to make sure that the Teams meeting is started before you do this or else you get a prompt. Okay, back in PowerPoint, I'm gonna go into the upper right and click Present in Teams. It starts uploading. Now my entire deck has been uploaded directly into PowerPoint Live mode. I didn't have to click the share tray or upload other things. I just did the one click from PowerPoint and it puts it right into here. And this is this new PowerPoint Live mode inside of Teams. So you can see my slides along the bottom. If I have things like presenter notes, they appear right here. And in terms of the second new feature, I'm gonna show a couple improvements that have come into PowerPoint Live mode recently. So I can make my font size bigger. If I wanna have my notes a little bit bigger, I can make that bigger or smaller. I click this button to go into grid view, which is like slide sorter. I have 77 slides here, so if I click this, Here's my grid view, and I could go all the way down and click a different slide like this and change that slide. And then along the bottom, you can scroll horizontally around here. And then the other one we have is high contrast mode. So maybe I have a set of slides that have a lot of text and I wanna turn on high contrast mode. So if I go here to the three dot menu, I can choose view slides in high contrast. And that immediately changes these slides into high contrast mode. So lots of improvements for PowerPoint Live inside of Teams. And when you're ready to stop, you just click Stop Presenting, and that will end the presentation for everyone. The third new feature is converting a Word document directly into a PowerPoint deck in just a single click. So here's my Word document, and you can see it's pretty detailed and has lots of different sections. I'm in Word for the web, and I'm gonna go to the File menu here, click it, now I'm gonna choose Export. And there's a new option, Export to PowerPoint Presentation. Let's click this, now using AI in PowerPoint Designer, it has a set of themes that it's proposed for me to choose from. So I'm gonna choose this one right here, and I'm gonna click Export. Now I'll click Open Presentation. Now you can see that PowerPoint generated an entire set of slides right here on the left, all with the same theme and based on the different parts of my document. You can see some of these different parts of my Contoso document. So in just a single click, PowerPoint can generate an entire deck for you. The fourth new feature is the Immersive Reader in PowerPoint for the web. The Immersive Reader is a tool that was inclusively designed to help people who struggle with reading, might be dyslexia, might be vision impairments, or it could be someone who doesn't speak the native language. It's in many apps, and now it is in PowerPoint for the web. So I have a slide here, and I'm going to select a bunch of text. I'm going to right-click, and I will choose Open in Immersive Reader. We call this Focus Mode, where we have reduced distractions in the user interface. If I go to the bottom here and hit the Play button, Select any text on a slide, right click and choose. And it will read it out loud. I can click here to change the voice settings and voice speed, faster or slower, male or female. I can go here to the AA menu and open this and I can increase spacing. This reduces visual crowding, which some people experience and can make it easier to parse text. I can change the background colors really easily and these are tuned for accessibility. I can also change a couple of different fonts here and I can even make the text much bigger if I scroll this up really big here. I could just have a couple of words per line. Thinking about vision impairments, some people prefer just to have a couple words per line in short line mode. I can also go here to grammar options and I can change things like syllables, break words into syllables, or I can even highlight different parts of speech if I want to. Now I'm gonna to go to the reading preferences tab and this gets even more interesting. We have something called line focus, so this will help you focus your eye on a specific line or maybe two lines. This might be ADHD. We have people with cerebral palsy who prefer to read with a line focus and other reasons. So I'll click line focus, and now I can just go like this and scroll up and down. I can still read out loud. Read aloud. Change the background color and font. And I can choose three lines or I can choose five lines. I can customize this in a way that works best for me. I can also do things like click on words and get an image. So we call that picture dictionary. So if I click here on color, you're gonna see there's a picture dictionary. 
Now lastly, I can translate in over 70 languages. So I can drop this down here and there's all these different languages. So for example, maybe I'm going to choose Spanish and I'm going to choose the entire document. And now I can read out loud. Seleccione cualquier texto de una diapositiva. And I can go back to the original text and then hit the back button to exit the immersive reader. So all of that is built into the immersive reader. Also in the notes area, a lot of times there's really dense notes and slides. I have some simple notes here. At the bottom, I will highlight and right click and choose open in immersive reader. And it's the same thing. The immersive reader is also enabled. I can read it out loud and do all the other things that I just showed in the immersive reader. The fifth new feature is auto fix for PowerPoint in the web. This allows you to really quickly fix up alignment and save yourself a bunch of time if you're always nitpicking and wasting time on formatting. So first off, I'm gonna go to shapes here and I'll create a square. And I'll do control D to duplicate that square. I'm gonna create a few squares and I'm gonna set them up so they're slightly misaligned. So I have six squares and they're kind of like sort of aligned but not exactly and I might be spending a bunch of time twiddling with it. Instead, I can select all the squares by clicking and dragging, and I just right click here, and you're gonna see a new auto fix, and let's choose that. It lines them horizontally and vertically, so now they're in a very nice alignment. I can do the same thing with some different setups. Here's a grid of nine, let's select all these and right click and choose auto fix. Ah, oh, looks beautiful. Makes me feel good inside just to see it. The sixth new feature is the agenda to presentation in PowerPoint for the web. This will let me really quickly create a really nice presentation from just an agenda. I have a new PowerPoint deck here in the web and the first step is go to design. Now designer gives me some options and the first thing I need to do is add a specific design to my deck. So I'm going to click this one here, it looks kind of cool. All right, and this is going to be the best meeting ever. Okay, now you're going to go and choose insert and we're going to add a new slide here and we'll choose just a basic title and content click add slide now i'm going to type in agenda and what i'm going to do is paste in my agenda right here just five bullet points pretty basic now over here on the right you'll see the designer recognizes that i've pasted in these bullet points and it is an agenda so using designer ai it says hey do you want to add five slides based on that sure save me some time click that now PowerPoint created five new slides. You've got intros here, new proposal with a little light bulb, that's kind of cool, it has brainstorming things, and you can see that it put these five slides for my agenda with that same theme immediately into the deck. And if I wanna change some of these, I can go over here. I have more options through Designer. So Designer gives me a whole lot of ways to very quickly generate a really nice looking deck in just a single click. The seventh new feature is that Presenter Coach is now on all platforms, which includes desktop, iOS, Android, and the Mac. So I'm here in PowerPoint Desktop, I'm on the Slideshow tab, and if you have the Office 365 connected version of PowerPoint Desktop, you will see Rehearse with Coach that's just rolled out to our current channel, which updates every month. In addition, it's coming to the semi-annual channel and annual channel a little bit later this year. Also, if you're on iPad, or iPhone, you can pull up the slideshow menu and rehearse with coaches there. And it's on Android and rolling out to the Mac. So we've brought rehearse with coach to as many platforms as possible. If you want to see an in-depth demo of how presenter coach works, there's a link in the upper right. But the next feature I'm going to show is the enhancements that we've added with body language feedback in presenter coach. The eighth new feature are improvements to presenter coach, specifically body language critiques by using the video camera. I'm here in PowerPoint for the web and I'll go to the slideshow tab and you'll see this rehearsed with coach. Rehearse with coach has already been here for a little while, presenter coach in PowerPoint. If I drop the arrow down, you'll see show body language feedback. I'm gonna check this on and we'll show some of the new features in presenter coach. Now I'll click rehearse with coach. Here's the pop-up. It says, welcome to PowerPoint presenter coach. You'll rehearse and then at the end, you'll get a nice little numerical summary and some suggestions. Click start rehearsing. Now you'll see there's video as well as the original audio. So the video part is new and PowerPoint's going to watch as I present. Some of the body language critiques. The first one could be, maybe I've gotten a little bit too close. Oh, move farther away from the screen. Hey, that's the spot. Could be I'm too far back. Whoa, I didn't realize I was so far back. Hey, move a little closer. Perfect. Another critique is maybe I'm inadvertently putting my hand in front of my face and, oh, keep the area in front of your face clear, okay? Another one is, I might be looking in a different direction. Oh, oh, face the camera. 
engage with your audience. Okay, those are some of those new body language critiques that have just rolled out to PowerPoint in the web. We still have the audio as well. And you can note, maybe I don't wanna have the video showing the entire time. I could say, stop seeing your camera. Now my camera is hidden. I could also say, turn off the real-time feedback. I check that bell there and you can see now it's turned off. We'll turn on the real-time feedback for audio, but maybe I wanna leave the video part off. Now when I'm done, I will hit the escape key. Here's my report, my rehearsal report. Now body language right here is new. Eye contact, if I expand this, it actually took photos when I was facing away and when I was looking forwards. Clear view, when I had my hand on my head and when I didn't have my hand over my forehead. And lastly, distance. Expand that, oh, that's where I was too close and that's where I was backing up. The ninth new feature is record audio in Mac PowerPoint. So to use this new feature, we're gonna have you go to the insert menu on your Mac and drop down the audio tab and choose record audio. This opens up the record audio pane. Click the record button. Now I'm recording audio for my slide. Click stop. Then insert. Now the little audio icons on the page. I can click that. Now I'm recording audio for my slide. The tenth new feature is record and narrate a slideshow on Mac PowerPoint. We've had this in PC. Now it's available on Mac. And for this one, we're going to have a special guest demo. It's going to be Jess who is a product manager on the PowerPoint team and she helped design and ship this feature. Here's a look at the new Record Slideshow experience. Once a user enters Record Slideshow, you'll notice that there's a new recording toolbar up top and support for presenter video recording. You can select your video and audio inputs under these two menus. You'll also notice that there is a new annotations toolbar at the bottom, which will allow you to record laser pointer, pen, and highlighter in a bunch of different colors. Let's see it all in action. Hi everyone, today we're going to talk a little bit about the solar system. Here are the planets that we'll be covering today. My personal favorite is Jupiter. Once the user is done recording, they can play back what they've recorded with a simple click of a button. Here are the planets that we'll be covering today. My personal favorite is Jupiter. If you would like to redo your recording, simply click the trash can icon to record again. Once the user exits Record Slideshow, they will see their presenter video narration added to the slide. Recorded ink will also be added to the slide and plays back with animation. The 11th new feature is Save Animated GIF on a Mac. So I've got a solar system presentation here. Go to the Slideshow tab. And I've got a couple of animations here that are built into my slideshow. This really nice smooth morphing. And so I want to save this into a animated GIF. So I'm gonna exit here and I'm gonna go up to the file menu and we'll choose export. Drop down file format and choose animated GIF. And you have some options here. You can choose it for really big, really small. We'll leave it at medium. And we're gonna make the background transparent or not, your choice. In this case, we'll just hit export. Okay, now it's all done. Now I can just drag that GIF right to my Word document check out my beautiful presentation with all the animations. I can also drag this right into an email. So here's Outlook email, drag it in. There is my animated GIF. The 12th and final new feature is linking to a specific slide in PowerPoint for the Mac. So I have my solar system deck right here. I'm gonna open up the context menu and we're gonna choose a link to the slide. And then I'm gonna say copy, copy the link, go into Outlook, paste the link, and I'll send that out. I can also check this mail in my browser. So check it out. It takes me right to the Jupyter slide directly. If you found this video useful, give it a like. Now, if you want to keep up with all the latest quick tip videos that I'll keep releasing, subscribe to my channel and then just ring the bell so you get notified for all the new videos that post.